Have you heard it lately? I mean, all the noise about veterans insurance from companies that treat veterans as a sideline. Well, I want you heard me that we are the veterans life insurance. The robot, we still invest in our family. And we think we serve them best. But don't just take my word for it. Let me show you something. You see, they're bandage checks going directly to veterans who've been in the hospital. The money is sent from here every day of the week with hospital costs running while you can bet they need every dime. If you're hospitalized, you pay $50 a day. That's $1,500 a month for any covered accident or illness. That's cash from the very first day of hospitalization, as long as you say. And we'll pay you up to $75 a day, over $2,000 a month for heart attack, stroke, or cancer. The very health problems we fear most. The ones that turn hospital bills into nightmares. But you'll be protected with cash benefits that are sent straight to you. What more protection is yours for the asking? That's right. If you're a veteran or the spouse or widow of a vet, your acceptance is guaranteed. Best of all, you get low group rates for this valuable plan. If you want to know more, just pick up the phone and call us toll free. We'll mail you the free information kit. There's no cost or risk. You just can't go wrong. Because when all the noise dies down, there will still be only one company exclusively for veterans and their families. Veterans Life. Why don't you give us a call right now? Veterans, call toll free 1 800 554 1400. The information Mr. Candy spoke of will be sent to you absolutely free, no obligation. That's 1 800 554 1400. The kit is free, and so is the call 1 400. That's 1 800 554 1400. Football player baseball require the coaches to impose sanctions on the lifestyle of the players. All these questions and more. A Mariner manager, Manny Lashman. <laughs> Welcome. Your team has become a little less recently because of some hijinks that they're doing, not because of the baseball playing just at the moment. And I suppose we just have to get the story away at the top so that we can want other things. What happened with it? They have a bull yellow here with my pair of shoes. <laughs> lost. Uh, I've called the Cuckoo's Nest because they enjoy having fun. And uh, it was in Chicago after we had arrived, and this was the first episode of the Jello. Jello went to my room, checked in, and left, and went down and talked to things, and we decided to go to see some entertainment in my room to find it uh, entirely toilet papered. Uh, I tried to turn the switch on, and I couldn't get a light to go on. So then uh, there was one light in the restroom, and at that time of the morning, I did have to do some leaving my kid in the restroom door. All my furniture was in the restroom. I couldn't get in. So I had a, <laughs> have a very huge suite, uh, and so I went to the other restroom and the other part of the suite, and the suite was in that one. So, and I couldn't turn the light on. The only light was a little bit of the bathroom. So I started taking all the furniture out of the restroom to come to find out uh, in the toilet bowl there was seven packages of jello in ice cubes. So <laughs> I come to find out, I tried to turn the light, light bulb in the room unscrewed. Uh, all the furniture, like I said, the pictures were taken out. And so this was the start of the jello, jello it, gates. It almost sounds like a, a group of uh, high school or college kids doing this to their, their fraternity brothers. I mean, how old are these men that are pulling these games? Sometimes I read that they're 28, uh, 30, uh, summer of... Uh, Caucasian, some are Polish, some of them are uh, Negro, some of them are Latin, uh, you know, but when they do things to me, sometimes they're about 15 or 20. Boys but boys. Like, <laughs> and you have, no idea, you have no idea who this is. It's perfectly normal. Well, I had two or three people that I really were looking at right there in Chicago, and then, uh, again, I made inquiries about it, and they all end up with excuses. Uh, so you caught them, what would you do them really? I, mean, I would like an individual so I could trick. I used to answer myself, and then after I got all my friendship back, I felt that I know I knew who the person was, so immediately, I found a light, put the light back in, I went to my telephone to make a call. And I called the telephone, and I woke the individual up. He said, who is this talking, who is this talking? And I'm yelling into the phone. And I said, who is this? And so I called him back again, and I say the same thing. I find out they have unscrewed the receiver there, taking a looking out, so I could, they could not hear me, I could hear them. And I was just like a stark raving idiot yelling into the telephone. <laughs> Now, these guys are pretty clever, and they really they cover, uh, to use a baseball term, they really cover all their bases, don't they? I mean, they really had you... Uh... Uh... Anyway, um, you know, these kinds of things, as well as a lot of uh, interesting stories about how Amber Clark can be able to fall for and the boys and I mean, just how crazy do those guys get when they go on the road for a week under that lady in every city, as it were? Uh, and how, how much do you keep tabs on their personal behavior? Well, I feel like I treat them like human beings. They're men. Uh, sometimes they don't treat me like human beings. <laughs> but I tell them that their job that to do is... Uh, be out there at game time, the time that I tell them to get there, and then after the game is done with, it's up to them. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, we're human beings, we're a product of society, and uh, again, some of them are married, some of them are divorced. Uh, mm -hmm. I know it was on here before, I've been married for 18 years, and I have a beautiful wife and two beautiful kids, and we have a tremendous family. Again, like I said, some of them on the ball club are divorced. Uh, mm -hmm. You're doing, obviously, a, a super job. The contrast between last year's or uh, two years ago, the uh, Seattle Mariners and what is happening now, you've got uh, a lot more people than you ever had before coming out to the ballpark. You're five games out of first place. It's really kind of I have a sense of what, uh, what turned around to buy the round? Well, it turned around because I had not counted I had last year. Uh, people, you know, tend to say you're too humble. 
Uh, well, I'm not. I'm just trying to be realistic. Uh, I made as many pitching changes here as I made last year going to this. Year the people are getting out. Last year didn't. Uh, Jack Mayer was a very good friend of mine. I, I played under Last year his club won more ball games in the major league than any other club. This year they have won the worst records. And I'm just saying, within one winter time, John Matt lost all his uh, sense of football knowledge. Before you go on the road, back to your family, uh, for the men who are married, do their wives go with you at any time, or is it basically you are on the road and you wait home? They're allowed to go on road if they want. They're hard with young children, aren't Right, it is, and that's where it gets very difficult. To me, to be a ball player's wife, you have to be a very special woman, as far as mm -hmm. I'm concerned. You have to have tremendous trust and tremendous faith, because all you read, you read in ball four, and you read in these other yes. things. But it's just like anything else in society, whether yeah. you be a... Uh, a trail and sales man. Mm -hmm. goes, uh, well, tell me about the, the situation with the actual baseball player's athlete. Um, what kind of shape guy for um, ball? Give us a sense of what you think these, how, what kind of shape these players are in. I feel it, it, it takes to be, it takes different uh, athletic abilities to be a baseball player than does it take to be a football player or a swimmer or a hockey player. For example, we have a designated hitter right now that is playing with five knee operations. Mm -hmm. And I doubt that he could play hockey or he could play basketball. Or uh, you could play soccer football with that. Yeah, but, but the guy, the guy sits in the, you know, you see the, the pictures on ABC or NBC this, this Saturday, Sunday afternoon ball game. The guy's got a pack of tobacco in his mouth out of here, and he's spitting all over the dugout, and he comes out, and the guy coaching third base has a pawn shot out of here. I mean, you got some guys that are giving the teams bad names as far as the athletes and what kind of condition they're in. Well, that's that can be true too, and I'm the one who chooses tobacco, but I also run four or five miles a day, and. Mm -hmm. We've kept our coaching staff in shape. Uh, our third base coach is not one that has a punch. I told him to make sure he got down. He's lost 15 or 20 pounds. So, <laughs> but there, are, there are people in this game that uh, you want to take a look at Lozinski. Uh, yeah. He looks like he might be out of shape, but I wouldn't be the one to walk up and tell him <laughs> that he's in shape. You know, lose some weight. Right. Well, do, you, do you have any sort of uh, lifestyle restrictions upon them, like you should not smoke or drink too much before a game? Uh, in bed at certain hours, anything like that? Well, I don't want any kind of alcohol in their body before a ball game. Uh, yeah. You know, after the game is done with, again, uh, they're, you know, they're on their own. We do not have 162 ball games. We do not have training table or anything mm -hmm. like that like you have in a football, uh, with a football mm -hmm. club because you only play, you know, one time a week. So. Well, listen, best of luck the remainder of the season. Uh, let's knock off about five games and get into first place. And I think you'd have Seattle just uh, doing anything you wanted the Seattleites to do because we're all excited about how the Mariners are doing this. Well, I'd love it. And Terrific. the people in Seattle really started to back us. And they said in New York that people in Seattle cannot yell and scream. And I said for years they didn't have anything to yell and scream at. Yeah. But now they do. <laughs> now they okay, do. thank Renee you. Lash, one of the Seattle Mariners, more of Seattle today. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. This is Edwin Newman.